morning. Welcome to another video. So I've come across a chunk of sandstone in the bottom of this wash that's got a bunch of wear patterns on it. And it's worn in such a way that there's a bunch of striations or it's cool textures, you know, kind of running down the face of this rock here. And some of these pockets are filled in with sand and pebbles and kind of interesting things to look at. And then the sandstone itself's got some lighter and some darker tones in it. It's really fitting for tonal contrast, which is what I'm going for here. So I framed up on it. So this one I framed up with my 240 millimeter Nikon Nikkor W F5.6 lens. I'm shooting T-Max 100 black and white negative film on this one. Going for all that uh, tonal contrast. Now because my subject's on the ground and I'm pretty close to it, I had to add a half a stop for bellows extension. Well, accounting for that, that put my exposure at 5 seconds at 32. Took two shots, uh, just for doubles, and I think it's probably about the best light I'm going to get. Because behind me here, the sun's going to start creeping into composition, so... Not really too worried about reflected light so much, since it's black and white. The colors aren't going to be vibrant anyway, I'm going more for tonal contrast. Uh, but I did want good light. I think this is about as good as it's going to get, so... Now there is an oak leaf in this composition, and full disclosure, there was an oak leaf there already, but it was really scraggly looking. Didn't really look like much of anything. It's kind of what it grabbed my attention and made me decide to set up on this. So I swapped it out with a better looking one. So I definitely manipulated that. Which that isn't really my favorite thing, placing subjects, but in this case it's literally like for like. It's just one that was this one was really bad looking. I was actually going to go with it and try to just use it, but kind of wrecked the photo. So I put a different leaf in there. And I don't really want to start a debate war over whether or not this kind of thing is okay or not. But uh, if you have any major objections or any input on what I've done here, go ahead and leave it down in the comments and go easy on me. That's that. That's a wrap on this one. First shot of the day. Happy to have that out of the way. Now I head down to the wash and see what else I can find. Here's one sheet of T-Max. And here is the second. Identical. Looks like it's pretty correct. I think I'm happy with the amount of texture and detail that I have in the sandstone here. The rocks too. Not too bright, not too dark. So I'm happy with that. The leaf itself looks like I can see all the detail in there. Looks super sharp. The grain texture of this, like the sandy texture of this rock is sharp from corner to corner, so I'm happy with that. How about the other corners? A little bit of focus fall off there. So on the very bottom left corner is a little bit of focus fall off, but uh, not too bad, not bothered by it. I think I like the composition. I shot a lot of these photos this trip where it's just really intimate, tight compositions. Uh, I mean, debatable whether or not these are landscape images or if these are you know more abstract, uh, but I really enjoy these. This is actually one of the main reasons I got my large format camera because I really wanted to shoot this kind of stuff on big pieces of film. So of course I haven't seen this inverted yet, but my in intuition tells me that it'll be just fine. Uh, but here's that final image and let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs>take advantage of yet is all these uh, textures and mud ripples or sand ripples I should say there's a lot of them but yeah unless there's like some type of subject there too it just doesn't make sense to frame them nothing but just ripples I mean that could work if you have the right kind of ripples you know something really interesting pattern or something but so far no dice it's great to have these conditions in the washes but if I can't take advantage of it I can't you know keep my eye out but I guess it's not the end of the world
So this is a scene I shot last year on digital, but I thought I'd give it a shot again, this time on film with the 4x5. Uh, I've switched the composition up a little bit. I'm a little closer this time, and I'm shooting a vertical comp instead of a horizontal like last time. And the color is a little better. Last year it was mostly greenish, yellowish colors. This year it's pretty much straight yellow, just vibrant, awesome yellow. And there's a couple other splashes of color behind it in the background, behind this yellow tree here, or group of trees. I have the same group of ponderosa trees in the background and they're leaning into the wash, just like last time. I, I don't really like the way that looks when the camera's set level to earth. Seeing them lean naturally into the wash and I think that's a little unsettling looking. So I took the camera and I rotated on a tripod to try to line it up so the trees look straight up and down. Uh, and there's no real reference to the horizon line here, so I don't think there's any harm in doing that. It looks natural to me. So I set this up with my 150 millimeter lens, focus just about to infinity. No bellows extension or anything like that. But I did use my 81B warming filter on this one because I'm shooting Provia 100F on this. And I am in shade and I have a lot of neutral colored rocks in the foreground. And I don't want those to go blue. So I put the warming filter on. So I had to add a third stop for that. And that's it. Uh, Provia's reciprocity characteristics are really good. So I don't have to add anything for that. Uh, so I was able to shoot in even two seconds at F32. And I took two exposures, one for a backup. I opted for Provia on this one instead of Velvia or something else uh, because I don't really need vivid colors in this one. It's not really about, you know, in your face color. This is more about earth tones and kind of neutral tones. And it's just a pretty scene, you know, plus the faster speed film and uh, lack of reciprocity failure made it a little easier to shoot with a little bit of a breeze blowing the twigs around a little bit. So, so that's that. Uh, I'm pretty much done with this exposure. I think that's all I'm gonna shoot on this one. I think it's probably about the best the color's gonna get. I've seen a lot of these maples, uh, it's kind of a mixed bag, but a lot of them have kind of gone yellowish and a little bit of oranges and stuff. And then there are some red ones, but this one looks like it's not really gonna go red. So I think it's about as best it's gonna get. I think if it did go red, it might get lost against the sandstone. So I kind of like the color separation to get with the yellow. I don't know if I like these exposures any better than the digital ones I took last year, um, but it's on film, so there's that. Plus the vertical comp, I think, is more conducive to the taller trees in the background. I think it kind of works better with that instead of shooting wide and getting too much of this sandstone. So I think that's a better choice. Let me know what you think. Again, the, the rocks look pretty blue. It's kind of a thing in a lot of these images and the washes that feature the rocks in the foreground. A lot of them have gone pretty blue. Uh, this is Provia, so not quite as bad as some of the color cast had on some of the Velvia shots, so I'm happy for that, but still probably would have preferred to have this a little warmer. The second shot, yeah, so the second shot's identical. But I like the image. It's just a little blue. That's kind of been a common theme throughout all of my slide film images in Zion this year. I just want the rocks to be neutral. It doesn't have to be like yellow. I don't really want it to look like it's overly warm. I just want the rocks to be neutral colored. And I got a feeling that I'll make the colors look a lot better up here too, if I do. As far as sharpness goes, looks good. Looks good. The yellow tree here looks like it stayed pretty still for me during the, during the exposure. It's really sharp up here in the background and I've got sharpness all in the foreground. So my depth of field looks good. I actually really like how it's composed, I think. The trees up here are pretty dominant on the top left corner. And it's kind of like this angle here and this angle here on the diagonal that kind of leads up into this tree. So I think either way, it kind of guides your eye both directions. That's kind of my theory anyway. I think I, li I like this one. I think I actually like this better than the horizontal composition I shot last year on digital. And it isn't just because it's not digital. <laughs> I actually think the composition is better. So I think it works better as a, as a horizontal. And I think uh, the fact that I rotated the camera to make the trees look like they're standing straight up instead of being, or relatively straight, instead of being leaning really far into the wash was a good move because uh, I think that looks natural. So far, I think it's probably one of my stronger images. That's my initial reaction to it. Uh, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think, as always, down in the comments. And uh, here's the final image. Thanks as always for watching this week's video. And you can let me know if you enjoyed it by hitting that thumbs up button down below. And maybe consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Take care and I'll catch you in the next video.